in terms of the authenticity and, and, and you know, how the comms were, that's just our regular communication kit that we use every week. You know, it seems a bit surreal now sitting here talking to you because, you know, getting up in the early hours of, of the morning and watching, you know, English Premier League football at midnight or two, three in the morning, that now I'm, you know, I'm here and I'm doing it and living it and it's, it's fantastic. The th thing that struck me most about him is his personal qualities. Clearly a man of great integrity, a man who valued other people, respected other people. And for all his ambition, he wanted to impress me, he wanted to have the opportunity to come referee in England. It was that sense of humility, the sense of family that he brought, um, that made him stand out as a person rather than a referee. It's really been a, a whirlwind couple of years, to be honest, really exciting, really challenging. I played football um, for many years as a junior. My dad was involved at the club I was at, and a couple of us then would referee on a weekend. Just, I'm talking under six kids before or after we played, and carried on for a little bit of pocket money and I just stuck at it and eventually got to sort of 16, 17 years of age and realised that I was never ever going to be good enough to, to have a playing career and I think because I started quite young there was, a, there was an opportunity to be recognised. You know when I was growing up that the NSL essentially finished and the A-League was born and that was when I was you know in late teens and coming through the system so it was quite an interesting time even for me then you know as a referee to think is this going to really be a, a career pathway? Do I need to do other things? And, and then ultimately ending up, you know, as one of the first full-time referees on the A-League. Watch this. Yep. Oh, there's a light one. Give it, give it. I reckon that's a yellow. Yeah, I reckon so too, Bruce, mate. Bruce, that's really, really late, mate. Yeah. I was listening to his conversation with the players in the A-League game. It was fantastic. You could tell from the moment he walked onto that pitch, all 22 players trusted him. It was quite humbling, to be honest. It took me 10 years to get to a point where you develop a mutual respect with players and again I think it's a bit of an unseen element of the relationship between players and referees that actually there is an underlying level of really you know ingrained respect um, on most occasions and I think it was quite humbling to hear some of the comments from players at the end of the game and yeah, it was a really nice way to, um, to leave I guess. It was me and Michelle my wife and family and talking to you know, bosses at, at the FA at that time in, in, in Australia and saying this is, this is what we want to do and how can we go about it basically. We sort of sat down and I was ready for, for you know, a really big challenge and trying to take on something, you know, something really different and, and trying to carve out a pathway that I felt you know, was the right fit for me and what I, what I wanted to do and what we wanted to do as a family. Jared hit the ground running and learned as he went along from game to game, adapted to life in the championship, and because of that, performed really well there, and then had his opportunity in the Premier League. We were in camp at St George's Park, just walking to um, walking to a training session, and he sort of the appointments come out at four o'clock, so everyone sort of got the phone ready, and email drops in, and the appointments are out, and it's just walking along the footpath to the gym, and and my name's on uh, Watford Newcastle, and it's. Quite a surreal, really sort of surreal feeling actually and you know I think I rang my wife Michelle and you know she, she had a few tears and just that sort of emotion of um, yeah I just just with the, the how challenging it's been both from a personal perspective and just everything we've done to get to this point that it was quite you know emotional and um, but then quickly you need to just focus on the task at hand really. Probably when it hits me is um, someone comes in to ring the bell to, to leave the change room and there's two bells, two minutes and then leave and, and the second bell then it's, yeah, that's when, you know, a few deep breaths and just get it, get into the tunnel. That time standing in the tunnel then is sort of my time. It's, um, you know, the players come out and that's just time to focus and get ready for, you yeah, know, what I need to do. Jared Gillett is the referee making a bit of history, the first referee from outside the UK and Ireland to officiate a Premier League game. A little bit of it was, was me and the assistant working out whether we were going to give offside or not on, on field, uh, which we came to in the end. Um, so the on field decision was then offside and then it's that nervous wait um, while the VAR is checking then to confirm or, or overrule really the on field decision. This is offside. Oh, that's 
celebration. It won't count. I remember at the end of the game, just an overwhelming sort of sense of relief, really, that, that it was done. Um, that nervous tension that you carry all week just sort of just leaves your body. And, you know, I think no one can really prepare you for that. People try and tell you what it's going to be like, but until you've been out there in the middle and, you know, of a, that Premier League atmosphere, the intensity, the speed, the noise, the feeling, the extra adrenaline, nothing can really prepare you for that. Lots of great things I could talk about, the things that stood out in my mind, what he did on the field of play. But the thing I remember most about it was, I was actually sat next to his wife, and it was watching the look on her face as he walked out that tunnel. That pride, that, that sense of them being a team together. And, and they've committed an awful lot to allow Jared to achieve what he has done on the pitch. And I wish people could just see that, that generally it was the pride in him walking out there. For me, yeah, it's just about establishing myself, trying to, to yeah, earn the trust of players and clubs and um, just establish myself in the English game and, and um, yeah, hopefully forge out a long-term career here.